In the last instalment we looked at Manchester's biggest and longest standing pirate radio station, the legendary Buzz FM. If you followed the first episode, we looked at the home of Buzz, a terraced house in Old Trafford, which was the location of the studio for most of Buzz's life, a shed in the backyard. Shed number one leaked water and had to be ripped down. Interim studios were set up in Eric B's house, as well as a warehouse in Newton Heath, which was the location of a large DTI operation, and then later a new shed was built. We looked at a recurring transmitter location at Hornchurch Court in Hume, but there were many other locations used to house Buzz FM's rigs. Some lasted days, others much longer depending on whether the rig was stolen or if the DTI threatened the occupants with eviction. Today you join me and DJ Snowman, a long time member of the Buzz Army in the heart of Manchester as we continue our whistle stop tour of studio and transmitter locations and tell you the definitive story of Buzz FM. DJ Snowman started out as a young listener to all kinds of music from his parents' record collections as well as pop music on the radio in the early 1980s. One evening while tuning around the FM dial, he started to notice radio pirates and liked the fact that they were rough and ready, amateur and more importantly, they were local. The first station he picked up was Southside Radio in 1985 and became a listener of DJ Sam Brown's Electro Show. This was the first time that Snow had heard electro and hip-hop, and he was hooked. He also listened to Eric on another station, Laser FM, as well as names you might recall like Tyson, Gordon West, Jeff Martell, DJ Uncle, Randolph Mike, Prince Tony, Lascelles, Zipper, Michael H, T2Bad, Laney D and Tiny G. He'd write down the names of the new songs he was hearing and ask his dad for some money to go down to Woolworths to try and buy the records, not realising that he needed to find specialist record shops or market stalls that sold these genres of music that weren't yet mainstream. Affleck's Palace and a scour of central Manchester opened Snow's eyes up to a new world of specialist music shops in the city. He got a part-time job doing a milk round, got his own money and spent it all on the records he was hearing on the pirate radio stations and saved extra hard for the more expensive import vinyls from the USA. One of the shops selling imported vinyl was Spin In, located in the underground market in Manchester and ran by Kenny Grogan, Russ and Ewan Clark. When he was 16 he was invited to DJ at a Jamaican wedding based solely on his growing record collection and this night sparked an interest and a desire to get onto the radio. In 1990 he turned 17 and knew somebody who worked on Frontline Radio. He was invited to the studio which was at that time in Hume Bullrings in Charles Barry Crescent. A few years passed with no involvement in pirate radio and things like college and apprenticeship and occasional DJ spots at parties and weddings took over. Early 1996 saw the release of 5 O'Clock by Nonchalant and a couple of years later Snow rang DJ Griff on Buzz FM and asked him to play the track. Griff didn't have a copy so Snow offered to lend his copy to the station. Griff agreed, came over to Snow's house, borrowed the record as well as some others and when he came back to return them, he offered Snow a guest slot on Buzz FM. After some hesitation for a week or so, Snow agreed to go and at least check out the station. After some thought, he went on the air for a couple of hours to do a guest slot. There was a few mistakes and errors, but it was enough to impress the station manager Eric B, who soon phoned Snow and invited him to come back. After this guest slot, Snow went on to North Soul, another Manchester pirate of the late 1990s out of Middleton's Langley estate. Snow did the Sunday morning show 9-1 till after the station manager Craigie B offered him the slot. 
While he was there, Eric phoned up from Buzz and asked him to do the Friday night slot for a couple of weeks. One thing led to another and Snow stayed with Buzz for 11 years. He went on to become heavily involved with the station as well as its friends, the RSLs, who came on in the area from time to time. Snow ran the Buzz FM website, message boards and other forms of early social media and became a lifelong friend of Eric B. So you join us first at Grenham Avenue in Hume. This was home to the studio during 1996 and 1997 before the first shed was built and it was used over a period of a few months. The site was an empty flat acquired from somebody that Eric knew with the transmitter site either over at Hornchurch or another block, Duffield Court. This site was raided by the DTI and never used again. The next stop is Mary France Street, also in Hume, home to a pre-shed studio on the second floor in 1998. The DTI arrived here one day when the station was on the air, but nobody was in the studio. One of Buzz FM's DJs lived on the ground floor, and the DTI, with no warrant or police, knocked on his door, but he didn't answer. The studio was in the flat upstairs, and as soon as word got out, Eric went to pack the studio away. The streets round here look very similar and years later in 2005, Buzz was off the air due to a raid. Another pirate, reggae station Itel FM, who had changed their name temporarily to Urban FM, was on the air covering for Buzz. Some of Buzz's DJs, including Snow, did a temporary stint on Urban FM. To do a show on Itel Radio, but it was actually called Urban Radio, I think, at the time. Buzz had been busted, so... The manager at Itel Radio decided he would switch it up. I call it Urban, use all the same gear, the same studio, and we played like soul and R&B like Buzz did because Itel used to play reggae music. So still, still with reggae, but with soul and R&B and hip hop and whatnot. While Buzz was off, and then one of the Buzz DJs phoned me and said he wants you to come and do a show. So do you want to come down to the studio? I'll tell you where the studio is. Take you down there do a show so I said yeah yeah okay no problem and I went down there and it was the daytime went in this flat went up the stairs and the studio was in an empty flat up the stairs and then did my show finished the show went off again got a call off the guy who ran it I never met him but I got a call off the guy who ran it and said yeah I like the show do you want to come and do another one next week and whatnot so I said yeah so the next show he arranged for me to do was an evening show and it was pitch black and I'd not really took notice where the studio actually was but all the streets looked the same right. on here and I pulled up at what I thought was the studio and I heard the DJ on air so I thought right I didn't know who the DJ was I just heard him I never met him before so right I turned up there and I'm doing the next show I knocked on the door what I thought was the studio <laughs> this guy opened the door and I just looked at him and went alright and I got to thinking he was the next DJ <laughs> I just started to walk up the stairs and then as I walked I got about three steps up and thought there's carpet on the stairs, there's pictures on the wall, yeah. the flat was empty and he went, what the fuck are you doing in my house? I went, <laughs> me! I was like, shit, I'm carrying boxes of records at yeah. this point. I'm like, mate, I had to explain to this guy why I was trying to get out of the house at 10 o'clock at night. As we turned the corner onto Ayres Road, Snow started talking about a possible location for a station called Power Jam, another Manchester pirate. It wasn't long before our curiosity got the better of us and we doubled back and noticed what we're sure was one of Power Jam's old aerials on the roof of this building but we can't be certain. The shop unit is now derelict but was in the late 1990s home to a Caribbean hairdressers and the studio for Power Jam was down in the basement. The antenna appears to be some sort of end-fed J-pole with radials but I can't be certain. This is our best guess at one of Power Jam's setup. Either way, it's pirate days are long gone. Moving on, we come to Royce Court, also in Hume, which was a temporary transmitter site in the late 1990s that was also raided by the DTI. At this time, the studio was at the shed at Eric's house and remained unscathed. Princess Court in Old Trafford was another transmitter location that was located in a top floor corner flat. Pretty sure it was the top left hand flat we're looking at now with the escape ladder above it if you can see yeah. right on the corner that was the flat that the, the transmitter was in and the aerials were up there as well 
again it looks very different to how I remember it anyway because it used to have balconies on there same as that one as well. The DTI arrived with a warrant one Monday afternoon in around 2001 or 2002 at 4.30pm. First Lady's crew were on the air back at the Shed studio and Eric actually brought them along to Princess Court to watch the raid and subsequent confiscation of all of the equipment from a distance. Hume Court was another short-lived transmitter location which was victim to a caretaker removing the rig. Another location chosen due to repeated rig losses was Horton Green in Denton and a tower block called Castleton Court. Snow went up to put a transmitter at the site and was sceptical as to whether the studio to transmitter link would actually reach, but luckily there was a line of sight to the shed studio at Old Trafford and the link worked. An old lady caught them entering the roof through the hatch and thinking they were lift engineers offered them tea and biscuits. The transmitter was located in a safe, but despite this additional security, the DTI located the rig and removed all trace of it. This was the one and only time that Horton Green was used, but it was beneficial because a lot of new listeners from Denton, Hyde, Gorton and Ashton were texting the phone line. And lastly for this instalment we arrive at Artillery Court, a block of flats over in Ardwick. This was home to another temporary studio and transmitter site in 2005 between the demolition of the old shed and the construction of the new shed. The transmitter was in the block here in the top, I think it was the top right hand flat there. And we used to call this the rat flat because the guy who owned the flat, he, he had pet rats. So the rats would be roaming around inside while you were doing your radio show. Uh, and yeah, we was up here in a massive storm one night trying to get the aerial up on the block. You can see how close the roof is. Yeah. So you can actually get over pretty much if you lean or put a ladder out, as I said to you before, you can lean a ladder out. You could lean back and literally clamber up. It looks more than it is from here, I'll be honest. It's probably only about four foot. So with a good pull, you can pull yourself up there and store oh. your arrows and whatnot. I won't be doing that. No, <coughs> it's not uh, It's not for the light-hearted. It wasn't long before the transmitter at Artillery Court was busted by the DTI, who gave the occupant a slap on the wrist. The premises was eventually raided a second time, and the occupant threatened with eviction. This naturally scared him, so he told Eric he didn't want Buzz running from here, and they vacated in 2005. If you're still following, I hope you're enjoying this tour of Buzz FM haunts around Manchester. The story is far from over, so join me in the next instalment as we look at Manchester's pirate radio mecca and the end of Buzz FM.